Oh no. That shitty Geiger counter is back again. But, this one, has new firmware. In this video, I am going to show you how to upgrade this device and turn it into a reasonable quality counter. If you own this product, which is the number one selling Geiger counter on Amazon, then you really need to watch a couple of my videos. If you watch this video first, then you will find out, if you need to upgrade the hardware as well, having a decent Geiger Muller tube inside the product is an important upgrade. Now, assuming you have all the prerequisites, let's get on and upgrade this firmware. This software, has been created by someone called Gissio, and you can find it on GitHub. The first thing to do, is to download the original firmware. That way, you can go back to the standard code, if for some reason, you don't like this upgrade. The link is in the description. You need to download this file here. Now it is time to download the RAD Pro firmware. Again the link is in the description. This is the file that I used, it's a beta test version, and later I will show you what I have found in terms of its strengths and weaknesses. Installing the firmware couldn't be easier. First, I am going to put the original firmware back onto the device. Plug a USB data cable into the product that is connected to your computer. Next, switch the GC01 off, then turn it back on again, and this time, Keep the middle button pressed. A USB drive will open, just drag the firmware image onto this drive, whilst still keeping the button pressed. And, just like that, you have reflashed your device. As soon as the splash screen appears, you can let go of the power button. Now, to upgrade the device to the RAD Pro firmware, you just need to repeat the process but dragging the correct file onto the USB drive. It's fast, and it's easy, and you can always go back to the original factory firmware. Do you remember this chap? In a previous video, I might have said a disparaging word or two about him. Well maybe, he just sent me a video message. I'm really quite new to this, so perhaps this is how YouTubers communicate. Anyway, for your viewing pleasure, here it is. Okay. How lovely. Yes, his experiments are pretty crazy, especially now he has his new x-ray setup. But in general, I kind of respect this guy. He has put online bullies in their place, he seems to care about the types of people that are often the targets of right-wing attacks, and appears to generally be a decent chap. So, if you are watching this, Mr. Weapons and Stuff, no hard feelings please, it's just a bit of fun. And for fuck's sake, please take better care to protect yourself. You can look at all of the standard dose rate charts in the world, but these are just averages. In reality, it just takes one lucky photon, of the right energy, to strike a single cell in the wrong place, and your life can turn to shit. The first thing to say about this new firmware, is that it enables particle clicks. So, 
No more hacking the hardware to get tiny particle sounds. The new firmware has three settings for the particle clicks, off mode, normal and loud. Obviously, I'm going to set it for loud. When I made a background measurement, I can immediately see two important improvements. First of all there is an averaging function, secondly, the instantaneous values don't bounce around wildly, like the original factory code does. Now, with the new firmware, the recorded background dose rates are very close to what I get with my Radio Code 102. So a major improvement indeed. Like the original code, there is a bar graph display. This one has some improvements. You can cycle between viewing the last 10 minutes, the last hour or even the last 24 hours of historical data. When you look at the settings menu, it is very obvious how much more control you now have over the operation of the product. The display dose rates can be set for units of sieverts, rem, counts per minute or counts per second. Not only can you set the calibration coefficients, but you can even choose presets for different GM tubes. There are a lot of settings related to the system calibration, some of which I doubt that the factory firmware even took account of. Parameters like dead time compensation are a classic example. This probably explains why it appears that the product is now a lot more accurate. There are even some controls over the high voltage power supply settings. Be very careful if you change any of these settings. Now for the not so good parts of this firmware upgrade. Personally, I find the color scheme and the general appearance rather dull and uninteresting. If you like a clear and minimalist user experience, then you will like this firmware. For mass market adoption, it probably needs to be a little more brash. And then finally, there is the worst part. Using this firmware, the battery only lasted me 24 hours, which is pretty horrendous. I assume that the creators will be working hard on improving this, let's hope so. The only thing that remains is for me to make a disclaimer. I did not create this firmware, or have any part in it whatsoever. Whilst it worked on my device, yours might be a different version. There is always a risk, no matter how small, that upgrading firmware will brick your counter. You undertake this upgrade at your own risk. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed my little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you want to see more of this kind of video, you could always press the subscribe button. This is not a commercial channel, nor will it ever be, so I can say what I want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time.